doing something. Um, Wait, hold on. You have some fluff on your eyelashes. Okay. Yeah, I felt it. I feel like I have makeup on. You do have makeup on. For what? You oh my just God. filmed. This day has interview. been so long. <laughs> Hey, I'm Salman. And I'm Jun. And welcome to a special The Mysteries of Beast and Beauty episode of Ever Never TV. And how it's connected to Scorpion. And how it's connected to Scorpion and Evil. Yeah, I do have makeup on because uh, today began sort of the Beast and Beauty crazy press tour that's going to happen over the next three and a half weeks where normally I go on a big tour and I come see all of you and now it's just like non-stop press. I am literally talking to every magazine, podcast, reporter, TV show in the history of the world to talk about Beast and Beauty and obviously the upcoming School for Good Evil movie. So June, what are we doing today since you always know what we're doing? We're gonna ask you how Beast and Beauty is related to School for Good and Evil because you've been teasing this big Easter egg. You've been calling it an Easter egg, it's an not, egg. It's, it's, okay, it's not an Easter egg because Easter egg implies like a small little egg in the grass. Okay. This is like, the whole flock. A whole flock of eggs? Birds! You mean like, is it the size of the egg? Is it like an ostrich egg? It's, no, it's bigger than an ostrich It's, a, it's, it's bigger the, than an ostrich I feel egg. like it's the ostrich. <laughs> it's going to be an SG ostrich. Okay, so let's, let me just explain a little bit of like how the Ever Never world is conceived. So the Ever Never world, which we revealed last week, the big multiverse, means that there's gonna be separate universes, right? There's the School for Good and Evil universe, and now there is the, the Beast and Beauty universe, right? And it's its own world. When you read the stories, you're gonna see that all the stories, especially if you're a very careful reader and a very astute reader, you're gonna see how they're all kind of super linked into its own kind of universe, right? They all sort of seem to be happening in the same environment. and. If you're really sort of clever, you can pick up on how the characters are related to each other within that piece of beauty universe, which you'll see as you go. So, I always want to be able to create a bridge between the universes, right? So that you're a completely fresh reader to piece of beauty, you can come in, have an amazing experience, but if you're also a school for good and evil reader, you're going to come away with something deeper, right? And so, I wanted to create that kind of awesome bridge. And so there's one story in particular in Beast of Beauty mm. where once you read it, you come away having a lens to a very popular, famous school for good evil character and you will never look at them in the same way again. Yeah. I think it was the story that I enjoyed writing the most, not because it was about a school for good evil character, but because I think it completed a big piece of that character's puzzle. I almost gave away their gender. <laughs> and so I think it's a story that I think will make a lot of you cry. I'm pretty sure it will, because that's the feedback I've gotten from the very few School for the Evil readers mm -hmm. I've allowed to see it early on. And I think it's a story that will live in your heart for a very long time. And I think if you are a School for the Evil reader, you will want to read Beast and Beauty so that you can have that experience. Especially if you're a true fan of the series, mm -hmm. I don't think you can live without that piece of the puzzle. Yeah, because I remember reading it right when One True King was coming out, mm -hmm. and it really felt like this was the final missing piece. The final missing piece, yeah. yeah. And so that's what I want to do in, in the Ever Never world, is be able to create new universes for new readers. So every time you come to a new universe, it feels fresh and different. But also, you know, be able to create those little bridges that will give you more and more information of the bigger universe that's in my head and my soul and all those things. And I mean, look, as a writer, my goal is to get better with every single book. Like, people ask me all the time, school years or Camelot years? Which do you think is better? And, you know, the feedback I often get from a lot of readers is the Camelot years was better plotting, better writing. The Camelot years to me, I will always think, is better than the school years because it's where I just was trying different things and trying to evolve and push myself. And so with Beast and Beauty, I'm trying to go up one more level and just keep going up and up and up. And at the same time, you know, give a nod to my past as a writer and a person by going back to old universes. So that's sort of, I think, the answer to whether there's a connection between the two. And you're going to have to tell me once you read it how you feel about that connection. All right, so what else do we have going on? So we have our Beast and Beauty meet and greets where you can meet so men. Tickets are still available in the link below. And you'll be able to ask me anything you want at that meet and greet. You can ask me about Beast and Beauty, you can ask me about the movies, you can ask me about School for Good Evil. There's very limited slots left. So if you want it, make sure you book your slot as soon as possible. We also have the amazing virtual launch party coming on September 24th, which is a Friday. It's gonna be at four o'clock Eastern time. 
and there's gonna be not just one, but multiple awesome special guests that you will not want to miss, especially Aww. if you're a fan of other said series. You will definitely want to be there, and it's gonna be a fun time to celebrate with all of you all over the world and be all in one place at one time. The other thing is for the Beast and Beauty launch party, there's gonna be an epic Q&A where I answer all your questions about Beast and Beauty and School for Good Evil and the School for Good Evil movie and all that sort of stuff. So if you would like your question answered, now is the chance. So put them in the comments below and tell us what you would like me to answer at the virtual launch party. Um, I'm going to be going to London. Right out of your head, you're like, He's going to London. <laughs> well, I was like, going, what is someone going to tell is them? Is he going to see people there in London who he might know? I no, that. I'm going to London to sit in my hotel room Sip and tea. count my fingers. <laughs> all right. We will see you next week when all the madness begins. Oh, my God. See you guys. Bye. Bye.